Helium Health is a healthcare technology company that helps hospitals digitize their health records and streamline their processes using our electronic medical records platform. In short, um, that's basically what we do. I was born in Richmond, Virginia, um, and I went to the American International School in Lagos. And then after that, I then went to the Cheltenham Ladies College. Studying abroad, of course, you know, you see what their healthcare system is like. I mean, every healthcare system has its flaws, right? It does. It doesn't matter whether you're in the UK, the US, Cuba, whatever, Nigeria, it, they all have their flaws. Nothing is perfect, right? However, it opened my eyes to, I guess, how their system works and how it differed, how it was good, how it was bad. The biggest problem with the Nigerian healthcare system is that for a long time, people forgot about healthcare. Um, when I say this, I mean that, you know, everyone focused on the banking sector, finance sector, everyone focused on telecoms, um, and everyone focused on oil and gas, so how can I forget? You know, and everyone forgot about healthcare. I mean, there's this whole, there was that documentary that BBC came out about, you know, the whole codeine epidemic that we have here in Nigeria, right? Again, that's one thing, right? Actually making sure that, um, what's it called, pharmaceutical companies locally are able to track their, you know, drugs properly to make sure that you can't just give out two cartons of codeine and sell it on the back end and nobody notices it's missing, right? Again, tech can easily solve that because that's just having a proper inventory system in place. Helium Health in the next five to 10 years as an entity needs to be the go-to healthcare technology company um, in the world. So when I mean go-to healthcare technology company, we are the ones that have your health insurance products. We are the ones that have like, you know, your world-class EMRs for any hospital. Um, again, even going like further than that, like, you know, we're then a household brand, you know, it's like, you know, in your house, you'll be like, oh, have you booked your doctor's appointments on your, my patient portal? Um, oh, you know, just send your results using the portal. Oh, just pay for this using that. Oh, you know, they've said that, you know, there is a cancer awareness walk and everything here in Ikorodu that, oh, you should go for it. So we have then become sort of a household brand that are now transforming people from having this sort of reactive, um, idea about their healthcare to it being more proactive, right? So we've then been able to change behavior. And even bigger and better than that as well, you know, we are the go-to people for all these international agencies that have data. And especially with like our government hospitals, actually let me start with our private hospitals. One of the things we do is that we actually sponsor some of them with um, sort of devices, right? So, you know, if you go to these smaller PhDs, private PhDs, um, it's really expensive for them just to start up and purchase, you know, maybe a couple million naira worth of devices, right? So like, I'm talking about laptops, um, desktops, all of that. Um, so again, we're able to sort of lower that barrier of entry and give them devices to start up with. Um, again, depending on their level, they can either pay us back um, slowly or we just say, you know what, just to start, we'll give this. If anyone told me two years ago, two and a half years ago, that I'd be working in tech, I'd be like, get out of here, like you're a liar. Um, just because I never saw myself as that tech person. I mean, when you think about tech people, right, you think about guys in like hoodies and like hunched over a laptop with like their glasses and like, you know, these San Francisco kind of nerds, right? You know what I mean? You don't think about like, you know, women like me that like, you know, like colorful dresses and, you know, things like that. And like, you know, get our nails done, like that is not, your typical image when you think about somebody that works in tech, right? Um, however, though, you know, I've learned to learn that, I've grown to learn that it is not sort of this scary industry that has like, you know, super high expectations and things like that, that, you know, if it's something that you are interested in, there's so many initiatives and there's so many companies that are looking for women to hire. I don't, believe I didn't face any challenges just because of the team I have you know and externally because healthcare is also sort of like a balance between like female and male account spots that it's just great you know so I don't sort of face any discrimination in that sense and you know everyone also forgets about healthcare when it comes to tech so you know I'm not part of the typical tech crew you know so I don't also face anything like that externally either so I mean it's interesting, right? I don't think I've ever had an official mentor. I mean, of course, you know, my mom is my mom, but I guess she also is 
my mentor as well that you know when I have difficult days or when I come and complain about this not working she gives me advice and you know same with my dad as well um, but however there are a lot of women in this sector that you know I do look up to and do talk to me about okay this is what you'll go through this is what happens and you know they themselves even sometimes confess that you know I'll, I'll give you an example right I drove from you know Asaba to Uyo which is like a five hour drive then the next day I then drove from Uyo back to Asaba and you know um, this, uh, you know, one particular lady who's the ND CEO of um, JNCI, Ms. Um, Claire Omashe, she was like, you know, Tito, like, you shouldn't do that because, of course, my co founders were freaking out. Like, you shouldn't do that. The roads are dangerous. Da -da 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 -da. And she was going on and on and on. And I was like, and she goes, but anyway, to be honest, I would do the same thing, you know, because why not? And if we were men, you know, nobody would be saying this. We live in this society where, you know, they're like, okay, why don't you just go and you know, study this or, you know, get like a proper nine to five and do all of that, right? And, you know, as well, you know, sometimes because of our sex as well, they then try and limit us to the kind of jobs that we can do. And it's like, ah, like, you know, you're a woman now. So how are you going to be like, you know, flying up and down and going here and here and going for meetings with men and things like that, right? But if that's what is in your heart, and if that's what's in your dream, and if you want to be a dancer, an artist, like if you want to come and work in tech and everything like that, do it and try your best. So if it's tech, please come into tech. You know, there's the Tech Plus initiative for women and for girls, just do it and try your very best. And, you know, look at me, it's not that bad. You know? Follow your passion. Like, whatever it is you want to do, like, just do it and literally push, push, push and know in your heart of hearts that you tried your very best to make your dream come true.